So, um, Peter, if you could please give um, uh, Curtis a little background about the technology and how you had this tested over at the, the University of Finland there, greatly appreciate it and tell them what it does. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Hi, Curtis. Um, so this is a fairly simple device. It's an MPPT charger that, that's uh, slightly modified to to drive the electrons uh, uh, faster through a large uh, condenser. And this condenser, they usually have six lines, but this one has uh, 16. Uh, so they can drive the electrons inside the system. So it, the generator itself is connected to a battery pack. It, it always needs the battery pack. It couldn't function without that one. So that's where the extra generation happens. <clears throat> so they drive it in, in uh, uh, with high frequency resonance from 800 hertz, uh, from 400 to 800 hertz. And inside the system, we have a static current occur uh, all the time. So we draw uh, energy from the battery, then it starts recharging the battery by itself. Uh, and the more seed energy you put in it, the more you um, amplify the amount of energy coming out, of course. But it, it can be uh, fairly perpetual by itself, but it, it wouldn't make as much as the 10 times more. Uh, it, it will stay around three times, which is very good as well. Of course. So that's how the technology work, and it's been in industrial production since 2013. So it's it's not uh, a startup. It, it was discovered already in 1994, and then developed uh, over the years. Um, but due to the, how should I say, uh, incapability of, of of protecting it properly, uh, it, it's only sold to close locations. So that's why you, you couldn't find it anywhere. So we decided then to um, to go to the factory in Korea and had it tested uh, on site. And uh, then we started some, some marketing um, investigations here in Finland. And, and we decided to have a, a second uh, test a verification that would be done by a third party, which was uh, University of Mikkeli and University of Kovala here in Finland. And they have a very uh, well equipped, equipped um, renewable energy laboratory where we had this tested or verified. Uh, and I invited over 200 guests over a period of three uh, consecutive days. And it worked exactly as, as uh, they stated and everything was dandy. So then we started collecting um, funding and, and the funding led us to, to projects and now we have a large a vast amount of projects all over Africa and Europe and, and uh, I, I assume we have a few ones in, in the States as well that will be clear become clear in the coming couple of weeks. So that's where we are with, with that product. So Peter did you have the, the technology actually brought over to uh, Finland correct? Yeah they, they, they had it with them as they came so what's the size of the, uh, uh, what is the size of the technology? Well, the small one, uh, this was the very smallest version that they had, uh, a one kilowatt system. And with that one kilowatt system, so we, we just used a panel of 390 uh, watts. And uh, with that power coming from that panel, we, we drove an electric heater fan uh, for the full eight hours in the lab every day. Okay. Yeah. Oh, all right. Um, hopefully you can hear us, Curtis. Yes, I can. Okay. So Curtis, can you share with Peter about your technology? So it's a multi-layer graphene panel. Um, the 13 inch by nine inch panel uh, reached 27.1 kilowatts uh, of storage. Uh, but again, we haven't, we have not figured out how to distribute and control that energy. So when we hooked it up, it wants to push all the power at once. So oh. it, it it will not trickle out. It just wants to to whatever whatever you hook it up to, whether it be uh, old Coda electric car motor, um, you know, we've blown compressors, uh, different items that would take a uh, heavier output um as soon as we hook it up the panel 
pushes and starts absorbing. So it's just constantly feeding the power of 25 kilowatt. It doesn't, it doesn't have a regulation to where we can dial it back to, let's say one kilowatt or uh, five kilowatt. It is all power all the time. And well, that's, let's build let's build a regulator for it. Right. And that's where we're at. We really need to build something that uh, you know we we thought maybe running it through like a, a nano battery, um, a graphene nano battery, it would you know regulate that power. Um maybe because the nano uh in the graphene battery would control the graphene output from the panel, um, you know, the panel does not backfeed that we've noticed either. Um, so if once the energy goes out, it's not like a two way road, it's one way and one way only. Uh, the power will not come back through to the panel uh, on a loop system or anything. It's just straight pushing power. So you know, going that's into... because uh, it's a uh, it's a um, supercapacitor. That's why right. it pushes everything at, at once. Yeah, that's what and, graphene and that's, does. That's kind of what we've been looking for. You know, like I said, we you know the very first panel um, was was not as good as the panels that we're making now. Um, the very first panel was obviously you know a larger panel, less power. Um, because it was still a prototype, still just trying to research and develop it. But now we've learned how to uh, manipulate the the formula to get more power in a smaller area. But again, controlling the output is just not there. We, you know, we downsized the panel to do because we were, you know, we were looking into solar vehicles when they started pushing the EV. You know, no gas consumption, no fossil fuel. So we started looking into um, powering cars. That's how it all started. Uh, so we made a four inch by four inch panel, uh, one inch thick, and we were able to control the power by in that form by making the, the panel smaller and not allowing it to absorb as much energy to run a Nissan Leaf but then you get into uh, after so long, you know, eight thousand eight hundred miles. Um, the wiring that we used, the wiring grid that we used in the panel, started to break down, and so from all that power just constantly pushing through that wire set, it was actually starting to actually melt the wire set. Yeah, look, can can the panel be shut off? Or is, no. it, is, it, is, is it just spewing out power as soon as it gets uh, a little bit of lux? Yeah, as soon as so it's a so it starts off in a in a uh, liquid form uh, when we pour it, and then once it's it starts to cure, it starts to absorb energy. Once it's a hundred percent cured, then it's just constantly absorbing UV. So if there's UV anywhere moonlight starlight sunlight indirect uv it's just absorbing and once it gets to its max absorption you have the power there but as soon as you hook it up to something that draws down it pushes everything and blows the motor i i, ha I had um multiple uh coda motors um that we have gotten from molin and we were testing on those. And as soon as we hooked it up in the beginning, I mean, it just fried the motor. It was like... So you made you made up. a battery. So actually, we just used... So what we did was we went out and bought a 2022 Nissan Leaf. And we utilized the battery that was already in that vehicle, the whole setup. And all we did was take the charging uh, components out hooked the four inch by four inch panel to that um harness and wire hardwired it in where that, that was running to the battery and letting the battery be the transformer or distributor to the actual motor and that's where we found success
but then, like I said, as we continued to run that motor, um, if we didn't disconnect the panel, then it would constantly feed that motor and, um, it just, it started to break down the wiring, uh, in the car itself and in the, in the panel. Yeah. So that's when we started to look, you know, we looked at a company called Mycular. Um, they're supposed to be a world leader in, in making technologies up in New Hampshire. Um, so, uh, we started to work with them to see if there was something, uh, a way to control that they could make a control for the panels. And then um, they basically told us it's just above and beyond their technology. So we've, you know, we've kind of been, that was back in August of last year. And so we've just kind of been trying to figure out somebody has to have a solution in the world to be able to control this energy. Um, I, I know one. <laughs> well, yeah, I've, I've looked at your... I looked at your technologies through your website and then I, I believe that that is the answer to, uh, yeah. to the, the control and distribution. Yeah. So yeah, the guy yeah. that invented the, the I, I, I'm not the guy <laughs> I'm no. talking about the guy that invented the generator. Uh, he would understand exactly what, why it does that. And I, I understand because that what you have built is a battery. A super capacitor. Can I ask you one question? What sure. happens with, with with the panel if 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 you don't draw the energy from it? Does it start melting or does it start destroying itself? No, it doesn't. It just so it, it, it just stops. It just basically stops at its capacity, and just it's like a, a it's almost like a storage um, at that point. It just did you storage. make it to stop, or or was this a phenomenon that it does by itself? Yeah, no, it just did it by itself. And so what we've what we've come to understand is that the amount of magnesium that we use with the graphene, it will only allow that amount of energy to take in that the magnesium can actually store. So that's that's kind of what we come to understand because the in the different making of different size panels and the different formulas you that we've used, we've noticed that the more magnesium that we apply, the more storage we're getting out of it. But the graphene, if you increase the amount of graphene, then you're increasing the absorption, um, the speed of absorption. Yeah, the rate. Yes, yeah, right. uh, because it has is it has a virtual no resistance at all. Right. So other uh, the metals. Right. So you know, if you put a, a hundred layers of graphene, then you're you're able to absorb quicker. But no matter how much graphene you use, <laughs> if you don't use the proper amount of magnesium, it will stop at a certain point where that magnesium uh, will just not take any more power in. Did, did you manage to, to, to keep it running for, for a real long period of time? I, I mean, yeah, it, well, it ran you it up to something big that, 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 that was just consuming everything it could make. Is it perpetuant? Does it just keep on going as long as it gets uh, uh, sunlight? Yeah, so so the um, the car ran almost nine thousand miles before we shut oh, wow. it down. Yeah, we shut it down because it, we noticed that there was comp it was compromising the wire harness, and it was starting to actually melt the wiring system. So we shut it down, or else it would have probably still been running to this day um, if we didn't have that malfunction in the wiring. But or the battery. I don't know if it was a backfeed from the battery because the battery was taking this power continuously for you know 12 days straight. And that's why, because it was a lithium battery. Um, so we thought, okay, well, let's go back to what if we use the graphene battery, like a nanotube battery, and use that instead of a lithium battery. And then that's when I was talking with Travis and them and 
they're like, we have a, we have a nano battery graphene. And I'm like, well, can I get one of those? And, and let's try, <laughs> you know, let's try it and, and see if that's going to, you know, be the answer. And then they started talking to me about other people that would have a better technology than just the battery um, to where we could control the output. Um, and then that's when they put me on to your website and, uh, you know, we, we just, we haven't, we haven't put it with any of the technologies as of yet, because obviously we just met and we're talking about doing it. Um, but that's kind of where we're at. You know, it's, uh, we know that we, you know, how to manipulate the formula to get more power. Uh, but obviously with more power comes more surface area. Um, you know, going into an eight by four foot panel to a 12 by 12 foot panel, uh, all the way up to a 24 by 24 foot panel. Well, and the small under one, the, the, the four inch by four inch, uh, that's 20 centimeters times 20 centimeters. That's very small. Uh, yeah. How, how much, how much would, would something like that put out, uh, per hour in terms of kilowatt hours? The four have inch panel. This? No, yes. we, we, no, we have not. We have not measured the output per hour. Uh, we know that the the panel itself uh, was generating, uh, well, continuously twenty four volts. Okay, that's good. Which was you know which we did on purpose because we knew that that's what the maximum. Uh, load capacity that that battery could take was 24 volts. I mean, it ran at uh, 16 to 18, but it was able to, uh, you know, take in 24 volt. So mm -hmm. we were like, you know, we didn't want, we were trying to see how we could get this application without having that, that distributor transformer uh, and control in place you know, how can we manipulate the panel to be able to not overload the system so we could actually see it do what it does instead of blowing up everything that we hooked it to? See, I, I think that, that the generator is uh, really perfect for, for this type of product because it can consume everything it, it, it um, um, produces. Right, and then you know, would have they, to go directly into the battery and feed feed the uh, um, the battery system. Somehow. Yeah, and so, so some kind of some form of BMS system would have to be built. Right, into and it. because the only other application right now that would even be remotely close to being able to take that kind of power is if you fed it into a utility. Um, you know that a, a utility grid could take that power all day long, but. Um, that's not what, what our goal is. I mean, obviously, yeah, we, we would become a utility or, you know, in future, um, you know, but that's down the road. We're trying to get able to run homes, um, cars, trucks, you know, things that actually, uh, move the world instead of, you know, going straight to the big, uh, empowering a utility, uh, without having, knowing how to control it. Yeah, I, I I heard your your uh, speech in the beginning and and um, I, I'm sorry I muted myself because the family went to the store. I was just uh, counting what we needed. <laughs> so so but anyhow, I, I love what you said that that you really want to do this for 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 the sake of the technology and and uh, I have the exactly same uh, opinions. So I was oh wow I like this man. Then then you pulled in uh, put in the word Christian as well and and that really suits me. So. That was happy news. So uh, yeah, um, on all of that, I, I agree. So yeah, like what I said, should I we mean, do next? You know, we were supposed to work with that that company, Mycular, um, because they were they you know they were working with us on our hydro, um, uh, our hydrostatic uh, generator. Um, but again, they want us to disclose the formula to the panel, and we just didn't feel comfortable at that point um, mm. to, you know, to do so. They give them intellectual properties and, you know, everything about what we're doing. 
Um, it, it just wasn't a comfortable situation, which brought us back to, okay, let's just keep continuing the self fund uh, and get it actually to a point where we can find a company that has that ability to control and distribute. And then we could move from there because, you know, I mean, this technology is just not, available i mean solar panels are out there but we all know that you know they're not the lifespan on a solar panel uh does not compete with a, a graphene uh technology and then we were looking you know, we, we met with columbia tech um obviously because they're one of the largest uh, tech companies in america and they've done a lot um but again it's still uh they want to know the formula so that way they can understand the panel instead of just understanding what we want to do. They want to get into, we want to know everything about this panel. And that's just something we just don't want to disclose, which I'm sure you all can understand. Very well, very well, because I'm being asked very uncomfortable questions many times as well. And, and some people don't seem to understand that. Right. Somebody else owns that technology. You 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 cannot come in and dictate the the terms on on how it's done. Right, and that's it. And you know they want to. Everybody wants to. I mean yeah. every every person that that's wanted to invest, with the exception of my partner Keith, uh, everyone else wants to know. You know he 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 don't care what's in it. He's like I just want it to be out there for the world. You know. Um, we're very Likewise. big on, yeah, we're, you know, we're really big on helping the world. Um, I mean, from Vietnam, have you ever, you know, Operation Smile is one of our organizations that we're working on right now. Like, that's what we do. We're humanitarians, we're Christians, and we just want, we, we want to put something out there that's going to advance us, uh, not hinder us, and then have us under the thumb of, of the government to, say, you know, we're going to cut your power off because uh, we feel that it's necessary. Um, this way, you you cannot cut the power to uh, anyone. They have their, their own panel on their home, their business. Um, you're not going to cut them off just because you're having that kind of a day. I mean, going, and, and this all comes from, you know, my partner, Keith, living in California and watching them have brownouts and and everything that's happened in California, um, it's kind of drove us to let's do this this way. Well, you have just described myself to the dot. <laughs> so, I mean, and that, and that's, you know, that's kind of what we look for. You know, we look for people that have the similar interests and, and similar goals, um, you know, uh, not trying to change the subject, but in graphene alone, you know, water purification, desalination of water, um, you know, graphene is good for multiple applications, but we're just trying to get this one application to market, and then we can move on to the other applications that graphene is such great with for. It seems you have uh, you have hacked my my Google. Google account and, and got a hold of all, all of our files. We we have uh, invested a lot of money in, in in water purification technologies and and the water harvesting. Yeah, that see, was so... where, where the energy quest started because it, it, it's clear uh, making water is very energy intense and that's why nobody does it. That's what they are talking about. That we are running out of fresh water. We are not. We just have to clean it properly. We have it in abundance in in the air. Yeah. yeah, and we have the technology, but it seems like in America, um, the EPA they don't, they don't want it. They don't want no. your technology. No, they don't. They you know they they just want to want to keep you on the back burner, and you know that's yeah. kind of you know Scott Shepard and Alex Bowman. You know they're they do UL certification, and um, you know when we were working on Micular everyone was all excited about it until we started saying that, you know, this would be an off-grid technology. You know, you, you 
buy it once and it's there. You know, you don't have to no, keep buying yeah. it or servicing it or cleaning it like you do solar panels. <laughs> and we're like, gonna... oh no, 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 exactly. No, yeah. No. Oh yeah. It should uh, self-destruct oh, yeah. in three years. Yeah, I mean, my partner made me move, literally made me move after Mike Ular. He was like, look, you can't be in that house. You can't be your address. Like, he, he got paranoid because he's like, all these people were coming. Well, we want, we want, we want in, we want in, we want in. Yeah, Just for a good paranoid. reason, he went paranoid. Yeah. So, Peter, I, I feel that this technology is such a great, we feel this technology is such a, such a great match, both of your technologies together, and both of you guys are, are looking for a few million. Um, I think that uh, between us, we can quickly, priority number one is figure out this uh, missing link in, in Curtis's technology. I don't know much about electronics, but I can hear that there is a thing that needs to be addressed here. Um, I think that Mike Dana can actually even contribute to that. We can figure this out extremely quickly. And then, um, you know, bringing in investment partners, whether it's men's uh, investment partner or other people. But uh, I think we have a really good opportunity right here that we should be able to move very, very quickly on. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, thank you for interrupting. I, I was about to go really, really nerdy now, but, but I, I think we have spoken enough technology. I understand exactly what this product is, uh, not the components and how it's made, but, but what it does and um, feeding that energy in, into the generator and the battery system, especially if it's if it's an uh, application where it, it should feed the grid, because I think this product is so efficient that if you wanted to to make use of a small small UV lamp, it could uh, be producing at very high rates even day and night. Just put a small lamp on top of it. You're you're correct. So what we did yeah. when when testing the panel, um, we took moving blankets and wrapped it, you know, in ten moving blankets to draw down the panel to see what it actually took to kill the panel, and you know, it took 19 days for the panel to actually deplete a hundred percent. Oh my God. Wow. Oh my God. That is, that is amazing. Wow. But yeah. Doing... See, because if, if you use a small, small version that would just feed the, the battery pack 24 seven, I think we could raise the LCOE value because the amount of kilowatt hours produced by the generator and this panel combined it would accelerate the system to to such extent that I think it wouldn't we wouldn't be talking about 10xing the energy anymore. We we could probably double it uh, fairly certain because the, what you mentioned in the in the beginning, the 27.1 um, kilowatts. That that's something that you obviously measured. Was that per, per hour or was that the content of the panel? That was the content of the panel. Okay, okay, I understand. But you understand with something that that is uh, 10xing it. We are talking about 270 kilowatts. Right. That's ridiculous. Do you understand how much that is? Yeah, that would be great. Because like I said, yeah. I mean, we so we, we've talked with Brown Electric on numerous occasions. Uh, and Philip Brown would love to have this technology for his utility company. Uh, that's why we started talking about a 24 foot by 24 foot panel, six inches thick. Uh, being that's able, dangerous, to, my friend. Yeah, being able to produce. I mean, that's five megawatts of energy. Oh my and, god! Right, and you know, so he's like, well, I want a hundred of them a week. I mean, I literally can show you the LOI from Brown Electric that they want a hundred of these panels a week and are willing to pay one point three seven million per panel. And we're like, okay, that's kind of dangerous at, at this stage. You know, if we can't control the amount of energy going out, um, that's all that energy, five megawatts all at once. I mean, that's what the grid carries on a regular uh, power pole. Yeah, they would need new transformers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, and, and that's yeah. what I tried to explain to him. And he's like, But, but you know, then, then it would be too expensive because the panel plus the transformer would be too expensive. But if you have... Uh, a number of them so it, it wouldn't be that large i mean uh, have a number of, of smaller ones 
Right. And because, you know, we have the peak hours in the morning, everybody takes a shower, blah, blah, blah. Uh, then yeah. we have the other one in the afternoons when everybody comes home from work, you start making dinner for the family, yada, 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 vacuuming this and that. And then it's quiet during the night. And it's mostly industry that consumes power. So right. making them uh, um, in, in many smaller units and actually come up with a system on how to shut the panel off when it's not needed. That right. would be the correct solution. And that's that's kind of where we're at. I mean, um, unfortunately, the gentleman that I was working on this with, um, he's now deceased. So I'm so low on this uh, as at this point. So it's it's been finding somebody that actually understands what this is and what it can do. And, you know, everybody's like, well, it needs sunlight. And it's like, no, this is a UV absorption. This is, <laughs> you know. So when we took There's it a out, a lot from, of UV that we don't right. even see. Even moonlight is UV. So this right. one would work in moonlight. Oh yeah, well it did. So what we did was we waited. We were in Long Beach, and we waited until one o'clock in the morning to take the panel out from underneath the moving blankets. And as soon as we took it out at one a.m., it started to charge. I mean, literally, yeah. Yeah. as soon as the UV hit it, it was back on charge Beautiful. And, and we were like oh, okay you know, okay. <laughs> you know yeah. we're like uh, you know well how do you kill the panel like what is the you know because we were trying to find out the rate of the lifespan of a panel like if we did drain a panel completely let's say you know uh, they put in an application that drew down more than what the panel actually produced would it kill the you know would it melt the panel would it uh, combust the panel what would happen if you depleted it completely and then it re-energized what was going to be the output you know and, and we learned that it just recharges um it didn't, yeah. it didn't it didn't die off um it didn't change the amount of absorption uh it stayed steady at 27.1 kilowatts and we we're like so we can't kill the, the panel. So how do we destroy the panel? And that's when we got into incineration was the only way of actually destroying the panel. What was the pore made of? You said you, you do a pore and as soon as the pore cures, it, it starts producing energy. What's Correct. it made of? Is, is, that, is that where you have the graphene in the pore? Yeah, the graphene is in the pore. Okay, um, what's so the other material? Is it silicone? It's a resin. No, it's a resin. So what, we've, we've, we've made, made of? Uh, we've used uh, two different kinds of resin. We used epoxy resin and we've used hemp resin. That has 30 years. The other one? Yeah. The hemp resin? Yeah. So the hemp That's resin. The, one, that one? To, the hemp resin seems to be the best at this point okay. for, for okay. strength. Because we did ballistic testing on the panel and with the hemp resin, it withstood a lot more than the epoxy resin. Well, That's epoxy has maximum 30 years, especially being out in the UV, would it even last 30? I, I think 20 is more believable because yeah, we, it started dry, drying up quite fast. Right. And we, well, that's what we figured the lifespan on, on a, a epoxy would be 15 to 20 years, where yeah. a, a hemp resin would be more of a 50 year. Um, just because of it's the component. Five zero? Yeah. Of a hemp resin. Oh my God. Is it more expensive? Uh, hemp resin is a little bit, not, not, I mean, it's pennies, literally pennies on a dollar between ah, okay, a rock okay. and a hemp. So it wouldn't impact the overall LCO value of the full system. Right. I mean, we got for a couple pennies, we actually doubled the lifetime of the panel. Um, and I'm sure that there's other resins out there that we could use that would last even longer. No, I love uh, hemp. Just... Keep that one. That's that's organic. Yeah. And, and you know, hemp being the strongest fiber, we were like, okay, take the strongest fiber and the strongest, strongest carbon. I mean, where can you go wrong? You exactly. know? And so that that's kind of what led us to it. And, it, you know, a lot of people don't understand graphene in a whole um they 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 uh, they know about graphene 
um, to a certain extent, but they don't really understand the makeup of graphene and how inner, you know, when you add it to a liquid, uh, how it bonds back together and becomes a solid. Uh, and that's how you get the different layering um, throughout the panel because it's it, it's a it's almost like a cake. Uh, you know, yeah. you have a graphene, a layer of graphene, a layer of magnesium, a gray layer of graphene, a layer of magnesium. And don't, don't give too much information. This is a recorded call. Oh. <laughs> uh, so you know, but yeah. it, it's a it's a multi layered system. So I I I, I understand. I, I had a very good mentor in in in, um, in the graphene world. He, he was very close of having a very efficient uh, graphene battery made. So it's supposed to come out in in quarter three next year, twenty four. Uh, okay. Unfortunately, he as well passed away a year and a half ago. He got um, lung cancer and probably from heavy smoking all his life. But that, that was a very, very smart man. He actually, he was the guy that uh, allowed the Finnish uh, mobile company Nokia uh, to oh. become world leader in, in no mobile space back in the day when they made the 3110 model that, that had a almost unkillable battery. I actually have those old phones that by charge like 20 years ago and it wasn't long ago we, we found the box when we were cleaning and we pulled out one of those phones and, and, and pressed it on god damn it it still had energy in, in the battery so so this guy Christo he was the one that, that um, actually made that battery for Nokia mobile company Christo was a Swedish guy so oh, wow. um, uh, they all already reached uh, 450 um, watt hours in a, in a graphene-based uh, battery. Uh, they, they did a lot of testing with NASA, uh, and I had it in, in, in the absolute zero, as in space, uh, to see how it would perform in the space station. And um, I'm still talking to, well, not on a daily basis, but on a weekly basis with um, Jan Frostner, who is uh, running the company now after Krista passed away. So the battery is still being um, completed in, in uh, the University of Gothenburg in, in uh, Chalmers, Chalmers University in Gothenburg in Sweden. Well, and you know that there, you know, there's a hundred and or a thousand one hundred and sixteen companies or universities out there trying to use graphene in a solar application. Um, there's actually a company in San Diego that's that have got to a forty seven percent efficiency rate. Uh, and making a solar panel with adding graphene, but mm -hmm. they they're only at that forty seven percent efficiency, and they don't understand how to get any further. They're they're trying well, to Chris, use... Chris cracked that one, and and it, it was it's fairly easy actually. They are everybody testing it with, with multi layer graphene. You can't use multi layer graphene. You need to use the one plate graphene, and and that was yeah. that that is very hard to come by because, as I understand, there's just a few companies that have access to it. Yes. It was discovered by by MIT scientists uh, about three years ago, and uh, then then that machine, well, the technology of the machine, how they did it, was sold to to another American company. I don't know what they're doing with it, but. Uh, since then, I, I have heard that there's a few more companies now that discovered how to make one ply graphene. Nano, Nanotech yeah. is supplying Curtis right now, uh, as of yesterday. So they they claim to have okay. the graphene single layer, no problem. Um, okay. Uh, guys, we have a few more minutes here. Uh, we have to jump yeah, I, I have, yeah. Then, then I, I need these minutes to to um, tell Curtis a few things. Go for it. See, there are a few things that I, I would like to do for you, Curtis. I, I hope that Bryce can put us, ourselves together so we can talk a little bit nerd face-to-face. Um, uh, -face. So we have a fantastic IPR guy here in Finland that, that uh, I would like uh, to upload his services for, for you as well to protect your innovation. Then you never, ever have to fear these kind of people that ask you things because when you are owner of the IPR, nobody can touch you at least in any OACD country. Okay. The other thing that uh, I think that we can do is uh, the chairman of the company, we just call him the chairman. He's a old, very stubborn guy, but he's a incredibly wise with, with when it comes to electronics. So um, I think he can solve that problem for you to, to actually shut the, the panel off somehow okay. or something else. So those are the th uh, two things 
I, I can do for you. And I, then to test that uh, equipment, we have engineers for that. Not the problem. And the chairman and, and uh, his main engineer, Mr. Uh, Dr. Cho, they are brilliant people. They will solve that rest of the problem for you. Not a problem. I'm I'm 100% certain about that. Right. No, I, I appreciate yeah. that because, like I said, I've been, I've been looking, but it's um, it's been it, no further. Doing, doing this in America is very hard. Um, yeah. No. No. We we will talk to these guys. They will solve it for you. Okay. On, on, don't, on that note, don't, also, don't, don't worry about it. On that note, also, appear not to interrupt you. Get back to this, uh, but uh, you, since Curtis is already his partners in Vietnam having meetings with Vin Fast, the car company. Vin, what is the company in Vietnam? Vin, whatever they like, they own Vin Pearl. I've been to Vin Pearl before in Vietnam. They own they're the biggest real estate development company and everything in Vietnam. But I think if we have a, a foot in the door with for the technology for the cars with Vin Fast, with the four by four panels. I mean, what's stopping us from getting Vin to come on board into backing your energy amplification technology, Peter, also? These guys are massive. Yeah, yeah, I'd be happy to do that. And actually, uh, my, my colleague at the factory, um, the OSCS manager, he, he, he studied with, uh, with the uh, CEO of Samsung, the whole thing. Um, so they are very interested in, in, in graphene and graphene technology. So they will probably be very interested in, in, in coming in as well. If, if we find one funder, then we'll get them. And LG ESS is the largest uh, battery manufacturer. That's actually LG in the world. Uh, and, and we have direct connections into the CEO and the board of directors over there as well. Okay. So if we get some somebody like this interested, these two giants will jump on. It's not a question about it. We're the combination of both texts together. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. What do you world think? Changing. Literally world yeah. changing. We could be desalinating yeah. the ocean with no charge. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and which we have a filtering system for that. Um, of course which, you have. <laughs> which, yeah, which is also, yeah, that's just another technology. I mean, obviously that was something that we were, we we're looking um outside of america to produce um we we've tested it um uh, in australia and you know we we've taken salt water put it through the system came out 8.5 ph on the other side uh no bacteria no no salination still had the the positive minerals in in the water so we didn't yeah, reverse that yeah it, it was it was um uh, and that's Right before my partner was murdered in the in the Gold Coast. Oh, sorry so, to hear that. Yeah, so, so I that's... put us together on 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 WhatsApp or something. We we have so many things to 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 talk about. This was a very interesting connection in in the best one I've had this year so far. Thank you, Peter, for making this happen today, Tim. All you guys, thank you for being here. Let's go ahead and wrap this up now. I'll send you guys a copy of this, and uh, let's uh, continue moving forward as fast as possible right now. We all need yeah, to Yeah, definitely. Lightning yeah, speed. Very good. Lightning. Yeah. Lightning yeah. speed. Awesome. Thanks, Rise. Appreciate yeah. it. Thank you, thank guys. Yeah. Thank you. Have a good day. You Thanks. too. Bye-bye. Thanks, Bye. Peter. Look forward to talking to you.